You know, as things continue to get back to normal, more and more people are going back to work. And although we may be at work, things look a little bit different, and that can put some stressors on your life, whether we're talking about at home or even in the office. To go ahead and give us some things to think about and perhaps some guidance, we're welcoming to the show today Associate Professor of Organization Theory and Management at Pepperdine Business School, Dr. Dana Sumter. Welcome to the show, Dr. Sumter. How are you? Hi, I'm good, thanks. Thanks for having me. Uh, thank you for being here because I know this is one thing that I'm kind of still dealing with. I've been back actually in the studio for uh, since February, really, but it was kind of a lifestyle change as a working mom for my daughter, for my husband, even to get used to their new roles. I know I'm not alone in this. You're seeing this as well? Absolutely. Uh, you're definitely experiencing some of the ch same challenges that I and others have been facing, um, you know, working parents, any kind of caregiver, right? There's this disruption to scheduling, you know, new routines, who does what around the house, who's going to pick up or drop off the kids. And so this disruption really impacts the whole household. So let's talk tips, though. I mean, how can you make this disruption as minimized as possible? Sure. Yeah. I, I think that one thing that all employees can do is to be really clear about what your availability is, because we've kind of gotten used to being always available or always on, you know, kind of expectations of constant responsiveness. And that's just not sustainable if you're going to work in person. Right. And so returning to the office, it's about being proactive around what you want your work hours to be and letting others know when you really need to be off the clock because this will help us to reestablish some of those boundaries between our work life and our home life and help to salvage our well-being and prevent burnout. It's just so important. Um, the second suggestion, I think, you know, reclaiming the joy of being back in person and taking advantage of those socialization moments. Um, this is the opportunity to reconnect with people. You know, as you described your return back, um, I myself experienced that too when I stepped into the classroom with students for the first time in a couple years recently. And it's like I almost forgot about that energy of being with people and how great it was. So I think focusing on the benefits, focusing on the positives, and really capitalizing on those benefits. So that means relationship building, you know, getting better access to top clients and projects, innovation and collaboration, the stuff that you can't really do over Zoom. And so, you know, you know that when you're doing that, you're not only investing in your well-being, you're also investing in your career networking opportunities. Well, I'm curious, doctor, you know, of course, we've talked about what we can do as an individual. What can people do when they're with the company or with the organizations? What can they do to maybe help this transition time? Totally. I mean, we can't let companies off the hook, right? They've got their part to play too here. So I think first for companies, keep your finger on the pulse of how employee reentry is going, right? This is the time for managers and leaders to listen, to pay attention to how their folks are doing, have those scheduled one-on-ones, conduct pulse check surveys. Um, you know, that way they can anticipate where there may be problems and understand how they can best help their folks. I think this is also the time for employers to really consider employees' holistic needs and make sure they've got the policies to help support them. Um, you know, managers and leaders need to pay attention to more than just what's going on at work, right? We all have really thought a lot about what's really important to us. And employees are just not as willing to put up with bosses who ignore their family needs or their well being. Right. And so employers can, yeah, up their support policies provide more structured opportunities for employees to connect while they're at the office, maybe right-size job expectations during difficult times. So those are some examples there. Oh, um, yeah. Finally, I think that employers can really talk up the positives about coming back, right? There's a lot of talk about mandates and return to work policies and no one likes to be forced to do anything. <laughs> so try to reframe it as more attracting people back to the office, you know, talk up how valuable it will be to collaborate with colleagues again, and then set up structured ways for those interactions to happen. This will help employees feel more at ease with some of the trade-offs that they need to make. Well, Dr. Sumter, we are out of time. Thank you for sharing your thoughts and your tips with us today. Take care, okay? Thanks, Natalie. You too.